Terry D. Lab with a unique problem on the bench. I've got a National 303 receiver that actually is receiving. However, the dial doesn't move. So the dial cord has popped off of the pulley assemblies, or worse, it could be broken. Let's take a look under the hood. So there is the dial cord. You can see it's looser than a goose down there. There's a pulley, it's pretty hard to see it, but the main tuning pulley that drives the capacitor is in front of it. So the only way to gain access is to take the front panel off. Luckily, I've got the original book, so it's step by step how to restring the dial cord. There's the layout, but the only way to access this and do it right so if you're going to do this, make sure that you turn the dial drum all the way forward like this before you pull the chassis out or you can crack that plastic and that would ruin your day. Alright, so taking a look up there, I can see the edge of the pulley and the cord's not on it. I can't tell if it's broken yet. Well, according to the manual, you should be able to change this cord without pulling the front panel. Well, we'll give it a shot. I have my doubts. Oh, well, there it is. I do have access. Maybe if I'm careful with some tweezers, I might be able to fish it around that front pulley. Alright, so the good news is, it doesn't look like the cord broke. It looks like it just popped off this pulley. So I'm going to give it a shot and hopefully not remove that front panel. Alright, so I was able to get in from the bottom with the dental pick and I put that cord back over the pulley. So if I go on top side and tighten her up, it may be ready to go. Alright, I think I actually got it. It's all back in place. Now it's really loose because the spring is not connected down here. This is what holds tension on it. So I'm going to take my dental pick hook that on there and see if that needle moves the pointer is working again what did I get lucky but what I've noticed there's a lot of slop in that cable you see it see that moving so the spring really isn't doing a whole lot obviously the cord has stretched and that's why it popped off in the first place so I need to somehow increase the tension on that spring so I think I see the best answer. There's a little crimp down ferrule here. You can see the two ends of the dial cord. So the best way to put some more tension on the spring is to shorten the cord. So I'm going to try to open this ferrule a little bit, pull the cords both ways until I see the spring move. And hopefully I can just recrimp it and off we'll go. Alright, so I've got that little ferrule uncrimped so now I can pull the cable and tighten this thing but I just discovered another issue watch this pulley I don't think that's normal there's a lot of slop in that there's probably a set screw in front of it oh boy okay anyway let's try to tighten up the cord and see where we're at all right I got it it's nice and tight again. Still got that jump in the pulley. I'm guessing like a bearing may be bad. I have another one of these that's tore down. I'll go take a look and see if there's a set screw on the front. If not, it's probably as good as it's going to get. Alright, so here's the hanger queen. You can see the pulley is held on by a clip with a cotter pin. So since it's not falling off, the only thing I can conclude is the bearings behind it or war from years of operation. Not much I can do. Well there it is. Best it's going to be. I put a little bit of Loctite adhesive on the dial string, cleaned and lubed the slide for the pointer. Now I'll clean that dial drum get her back together. Well there it is. Operating the best it can. I'm just going to have to warn the guy to take it real easy on this control. Well, this radio doesn't have a calibrator, so I have no way to verify that that little needle was actually where it should have been. 
But luckily for me, got this little WaveTech generator. Right now I'm outputting 27 megahertz right on the money. And guess what? That's where we're sitting. So this is kind of a mono band receiver. The guy uses it on 11 meters to listen to his buddies. So luckily I don't have to worry about maintenance on the rest of the radio. And thank God I didn't have to tear that front panel off to discover that wore out tuning mechanism. That would have sucked. In this case, I was able to do this in about an hour. So good deal for D-Lab. We'll see you.